Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another video. This time it's another review. So just a little recap, um, I've actually looked at Dragon Touch's um, products before, specifically a 4K, um, it's sort of like an action sports cam. I've been using it as a, uh, like a car dash cam. And yeah, so I wanted to look at another one of their products. And this just came out, this is actually a Android tablet. And they contacted me and I looked at the specs and um, there are a couple things that stood out to me. Uh, basically, I've been using this tablet right here uh, for I think about almost two years now. And it's a Samsung, but it's one of their lower end tablets. So this isn't even full HD. This is only 720p, I believe the screen. Um, and it has certain limitations. This can't do mirror cast. Uh, yeah, and um, it's the Wi-Fi is not particularly fast, and it's just been sort of getting sluggy, you know, after you've had, like, a phone or a tablet for, for a little while. After a few updates, it just magically gets slower. But anyway, uh, so I took a look, and I found this guy, and this is a 10.1-inch uh, Full HD 1080p, and this has what they call, I think, like, quantum display or something like that. In a nutshell, it's supposed to have really super vibrant, like, uh, saturated colors, We'll take a look at that and see just how, how fancy the screen is. Yeah, there we go. Quantum dot technology. Um, whatever that means. Uh, yeah, uh, they're touting eye care, basically like a blue light filter. Pretty much all Android tablets or phones do that now. It is an octa-core processor. Um, I believe, if I remember correctly, 1.2 gigahertz. Uh, runs Android 10. And actually has a pretty sizable battery. Uh, 5,000 milliamp hours. And the thing weighs... This box weighs significantly. Yeah, let's see. Screen, uh, 1920 by 1200. Cameras, I, I never really got the purpose of cameras on tablets, unless if you're going to be doing video calls. I'm not going to be using this as a camera, so it's not that important. It does have a uh, dual band Wi-Fi, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. That should be useful. And actually has a decent amount of RAM, 3 gigs. On this model, there's a model that I believe is like $15 or $20 cheaper. Uh, by the way, this retails, I believe, for $169.99. There'll be a correction if I'm wrong about that. And uh, 32 gigs of flash. So not that much flash, but huge thing that everyone seems to be, you know, taking out of phones and tablets nowadays. This has a micro SD card slot, so you can upgrade this. And I believe they specify 128 gig max, but there really isn't like a hard set maximum other than whatever file system um, the system is using. So I've stuck five 12 gig cards in devices that said they only supported up to like 32 gigs and I've, I've never had a problem with that. So pretty sure this will be the same. Anyway, let's just slide this out of its slip cover. By the way, very nice box. And just a piece of foam. And we have the tablet right here. Tiny little finger holds to get in there. <laughs> yeah, I say this about a lot of things. This is a murder weapon. If someone hit you in the back of the head with this, you would not be getting up anytime soon. Wow, this feels really substantial. And one thing, this is a Samsung A8.0 from 2019. And it, even though it does have a metal back, it kind of it has these cheap plastic guards here. And it... It does kind of have a little bit of give, and it creaks, like, right there. So, I mean, the build quality on this, this was about 150. Um, but just holding this, it feels cold, and it feels heavy and hard. Already, anyway, we'll get into that in a second. We have an actual hard copy of a user manual. Which, yeah, in multiple languages, it's, I don't really need a manual, it's an Android tablet. We have a very nice gold Dragon Touch card, and this is for a two-year warranty. And surprisingly enough, every other manufacturer seems to not include cords and power adapters anymore, but yeah, they've nicely thrown in, let's see, what is this rated at? Uh, 10 watts, so 5 volts, uh, 2 mil two amps basically so yeah this will get the job done i don't believe 
the um, the device itself uh, supports like fast charging or anything. So I think two amps is going to be the max um, charge rate on that. And so you can see here, it actually uses USB-C. So thank you, thank you, manufacturers for listening and actually putting uh, USB Type C on devices. Anyway, we'll take it out of this nice little baggie, and we have a sheet that says attention, and it just tells you how to turn it on and set it up a little bit, whatever. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the device itself it feels so substantial, holy crap. Um, it is plastic on the back. Yeah, and it is a little bit springy. Um, it doesn't creak so far, and it doesn't flex if I try to bend it gently. Um, build quality feels okay, but I think most of the weight is in, this is glass, it feels like. It's definitely cold. So yeah, this feels like it has a like laminated glass front. And um, just, I guess I'll give you guys a quick go through. So here's your camera. There's a flash here, inter interestingly enough. But yeah, this is a little pissant camera. If, if you want to really take pictures, you know, get an actual camera. There is a little flappy flap here. And it looks like you need a fingernail. There you go. It just pops off. And there are some slots inside. There's a micro SD card slot. The edge is kind of rough. I'm, I'm not really happy about that. And it looks like there would be a dual SIM slot. Um, I'm guessing maybe on a higher end model or maybe an international model. Um, so yeah, it looks like we don't get any SIM cards for um, cellular data. But we do get at least the SD card slot. And this does feel kind of cheap, and like I could easily snap this if I bent it. So yeah, but I mean, I guess you just put a card in there, and you're not going to be taking it out all the time. So it's sort of forgivable. That just snaps right on. And we have the USB Type C connector on there. Really hard to see with reflective surfaces. So that's for charging. Interesting that they put it up in the corner as opposed to one of the sides or the bottom. But I guess that's okay if you're going to have like a, a tablet stand, you can have it charging while in the stand. Whereas if it's hanging out the side or the bottom, it might kind of interfere. We have the power button, volume, a headphone jack, dual speakers left and right. It looks like the mic hole is right at the bottom there. And on the left hand side, nothing. And at the top, just a USB charger. There is a little uh, pinhole camera there. Probably good enough for like making a Skype call or whatever, or Zoom. But yeah, like I said, tablets I pretty much use for like media consumption. So uh, videos, either YouTube videos watching or um, media files on like an SD card. So yeah, anyway, let's uh, do some ASMR. That will never get old. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, exactly like I thought. Definitely. I don't want to bite it or anything, but yeah, this definitely feels like glass. And it already has fingerprint smudges on it. A little bit. I wonder if they have any oleophobic coatings. I'm going to have to test that out as I use it. Yeah, there's also film on the back, which does not have a pull tab. Yeah, I'm just going to leave that on. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, fire this up real quick. Let's see how fast it takes to boot the first time. First time boots always take a little longer because you have to set up everything. But yeah, I'm going to actually use this for about a week and get back to you guys. Um, I just want to see how long it takes to get to the start screen and at least get started setting this up. There we go. Too big to have in frame. So yeah, okay. It looks like I'm going to have to set this up. Um, I'm going to do that right now real quick. Get the camera in a better position so that there's not all these lights above uh, interfering with the shot. So give me one second. Get this set up. I'll use it for a little while and then I'll give you guys my impression.
Okay, you might be wondering why I'm sitting on the floor. Well, that's just so that I can fit, you know, the camera right in front of the tablet. Uh, because this is a relatively large tablet. Anyway, uh, we'll just turn this on. My favorite feature of this is it will unlock when it sees my face. And that's my face over there. But yeah, um, I love that feature. And it works pretty consistently. There's only a few times, like if it's too dark in the room, that it can't detect and it doesn't work. Uh, but anyway, I love that feature. So let's just get this lined up. And so yeah, um, my thoughts on this. So I do have... Uh, my previously uh, heavily used tablet was a Samsung. And the specs between that and this are actually pretty similar in terms of um, like the the memory and, and whatnot. This has a little bit more RAM. This has three gigs. And uh, the screen, obviously, this is full HD. The screen on the Samsung is only 720p. So that's, that's the first thing that you know. Uh, when watching video, uh, 1080p video, 60 frames per second looks fantastic on this. And it's just no comparison. And the screen on this guy, I have this actually at the lowest brightness. And so if I turn this all the way up, uh, you can see just how bright this gets. Um, my auto white balance on my, my uh, camera might be doing something funny. But yeah, that's super bright. I actually leave this on lowest brightness. That's like perfect for me. Um, but sometimes when I'm in like a very dark room, I wish it could get a little bit darker, but it's not a deal breaker. Anyway, the screen, I think, is the by far the biggest um, thing going for this tablet, especially given the price, uh, which is a little tiny bit more expensive than the Samsung tablet that I have, which I believe retails now for about $150. Um, and just the having the dual band Wi-Fi on this couple with the screen, this makes it the perfect like streaming video player. I have a little tablet stand. I have this set up in the morning. Every morning, I'll, I'll watch some like Netflix or something, and this has worked great. Um, the Wi-Fi on this is actually more consistent and faster than the Samsung. Um, that I don't know if it's due to the antenna placement on that. Whenever I hold the Samsung in my hand, like I normally do a tablet, um, I'll get like a lot of stuttering and dropouts. I don't have to wait for videos to buffer, especially if I'm trying to watch them in HD. Um, this, I haven't had any of those issues yet. It just, the Wi-Fi on this works great. So that's, that's one really huge good thing about this tablet. Uh, the processor on this, unfortunately, I believe is actually not quite as powerful as the one on the Samsung. And so that's kind of where they, um, they, they cost cut in order to get the price down on this because the screen I imagine can have been cheap on this. Uh, so they cut down on the the processor. They have plenty of RAM. It's just the octa-core processor is clocked, I think, only at 1.2 gigahertz. And on the Samsung, it's like something like 1.6 or 1.8. Uh, so it's a little bit slower. And you definitely notice that sometimes when like scrolling through, um, it'll sometimes, you know, stutter a little bit, especially if you're switching tasks. So if you're opening up like a tab or something that wasn't, you know, this was apparently open before, if you're opening up something like a web page, it'll take quite a while for it to go through and uh, to reload. So that's that's one thing that I think is a little bit disappointing, but just in terms of like media consumption. And so let's just fire up one of my videos just as a test. There, and it's it's already playing. And we're watching it at 1080p. Let's just do a longer video and scroll through it as fast as we can just to see how it keeps up. So we're at the beginning of the video. And make sure we are on t uh, 1080p. Let's just set that to fixed instead of auto. And I'm not, I'm actually on the opposite side of the house from my router. So this isn't even like super close. I'm on the same floor. Uh, let's just pause it. There, scroll. And already by the time I went to click the play button, it already had buffered. That's pretty quick. <laughs> And this is, you know, full 1080p. It's not 60 FPS. I only shoot my videos in 30 FPS. But yeah, that that's really good. 
and, you know, the screen itself is like super vibrant and I, I'm really happy about that. Uh, the audio, uh, let's just, uh, let's just look at like my intro. Where's my channel trailer? Turn the audio all the way up. Now the speakers are on the bottom for these. Now, they're actually pretty good. Um, audio volume is, is really good. They're lacking in bass a little bit, but I mean, look how small they are. They're just like these tiny little phone speakers on, on either side. So I'm not really expecting much of them uh, from that point. But yeah, in terms of volume, this will get the job done if you're just watching a quick video or just want to have the weather on or whatever in the morning. More than good enough. Um, you can always use Bluetooth headphones. That's what I do most of the time anyway. Uh, so that that also takes care of the audio quality. But yeah, uh, it's just going right along right now. Um, YouTube videos work fantastically. Netflix, Hulu, all that works great as well. Now, I think a second point where they cost cut is the battery. Uh, let me pull up. I have a, um, a, a few tests that I did. Okay, so the longest time I was able to get this to run was uh, on this screen here you can see i ran it for seven hours pretty much straight over the course of a weekend and on and off using wi-fi playing some files locally from an sd card and you can see it ran to seven hours for nine percent so i'm expecting this could probably have run for maybe a half an hour longer than that now the rating on this says it has something like over 10 hours of battery life, maybe under ideal conditions if you don't have... Oh, and one other thing, I was running both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth the whole time on this. So it was draining quite a bit of power. Uh, seven hours is pretty res respectable for a tablet though, um, especially one with the screen this size. But keep in mind that was at the lowest uh, backlight brightness setting. Uh, so... The battery on my Samsung is is quite a bit better than this. I usually get at least like two days straight of um, pretty similar conditions in terms of like Wi-Fi use and Bluetooth. Uh, so I'm guessing the battery on this, they said it's 5,000 milliamp hours. Um, and given, even though this is very heavy in terms of the glass front, you can kind of feel it's, um, you know, there are hollow spaces uh, inside. So I'm guessing maybe the battery isn't quite as large as it could have been. So that's probably where they cost cut. So um, yeah, I, I don't see this getting above like nine hours of battery life. So their their tests um, that they ran might have been a little bit optimistic uh, with a lot of settings off. But yeah, still seven hours, a little over seven hours for the way that I use it is, is plenty good enough. So other hiccups that I ran into... Um, the I'm not too happy, and I noted this when I first opened this about the uh, like this little flap and the SD card slot. Now I actually had a random mysterious issue, um, maybe about a day into using this, um, it would randomly stop detecting the SD card, and I would have to open it, uh, you know, remove it, put it back in, and then it would re recognize it for like about half an hour, and then it do the same thing. And I really didn't, I, I kept doing that. I thought maybe it was a problem with the card. I did a scan on my computer. The card's fine. I think it was actually the contacts and maybe the fit. Um, the card, the way it goes in is a little bit rough. It's not like the spring-loaded nice slots that you have. It's a friction fit, so you just kind of push it until it stops. Uh, maybe I didn't have it pushed in all the way or something, or maybe, you know, there was some uh, wear period uh, but now it works just fine, so I, I don't know what the issue up, was up with that. Um, I haven't had this disconnect and unmount on me yet uh, since then. So I, that's one of the other things. Maybe the um, the slot itself is kind of cheap. Um, so yeah, other than that though, I think for 160 this is definitely worth it. Uh, unless if you're doing a lot of web browsing and that kind of stuff because some of you know, the processor is not so great. But in terms of like watching video, a lot of that doesn't really require your processor. A lot of that uses um, like the um, embedded decoding and whatnot. So it 
doesn't really require a lot of horsepower if you're watching like H264, H265 video. Um, so yeah, definitely if you're if you're into watching a lot of like YouTube and streaming services and whatnot, definitely take a look at this tablet. So another two things that are kind of disappointing are the cameras. And I don't even really consider this a talking point for myself. I will never use a tablet camera as like a camera. It's just not useful for me in any device, even if the camera is really good. I'm not going to sit there and hold up like this honking huge tablet just to take a picture when I can just use my smartphone. But uh, the cameras are, are pretty laughably bad. And I guess I could show you. Um, open up the app here. Everything like you can see the ground color is definitely tan and it looks like magenta here. And it, there's sort of latency, it's sort of jello -y, I'm guessing because the frame rate isn't too high, and that gets worse in lower light conditions. There's actually quite a bit of light in this room right now. So this is actually better than I'd normally see this perform. But yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, the resolution actually isn't so bad, and when it can autofocus, it gives you enough detail. It's just like the color renderings all completely screwed up, and the latency is not so great. So yeah, I'm, I'm never going to even use this, so it's not an issue for me. So pretty much in summary, uh, get this for media consumption. Don't really get this so much for like web browsing or video or camera pictures or anything like that. Uh, this works just fantastically for watching uh, videos on. Once again, huge thanks to... Uh, to Dragon Touch for sending this guy in for a review. I think this is actually a very respectable um, budget tablet, especially for the 10.1 inch um, range, which usually you don't see tablets of that size for under 200. So having this squarely under 200, I think is the right choice for pricing. Uh, this is not going to match, you know, higher end tablets made by like large manufacturers like Samsung and, and whatnot. But it's not really meant to, I think. It is, it is a budget mid-range tablet. Um, for the features that you're getting and the price that you're paying and the rough quality, uh, for the most part, uh, are great. Oh yeah, and one other thing I forgot to mention, the USB charging. Uh, the power brick that it included was only um, 2 amps at 5 volts. This does not do quick charge or anything. It takes quite a while to charge up the 5,000 milliamp battery on here. I think leaving it plugged in something like probably four or five hours to, to fully charge the battery, to top it off fully from completely dead. Uh, so this is not very quick charging. That's sort of another thing that I was, I was a little bit disappointed. I'm used to plugging in my, my Samsung tablet and from nearly dead to full, it'll only take like two and a half hours. So yeah, anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I will have links down below and more technical information on the sales page if you guys are interested. If you're in the market for a tablet and you do a lot of media consumption, uh, definitely check this guy out. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.